Hello, 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 hello. JLR Investigates. Happy April Fool's Day, everyone. Come on in. Come on in. Let's talk. Let's talk. Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers is still missing, folks. We've been covering his case for weeks now. 15-year-old boy. Hendersonville, Tennessee, Sumner County still has not been found. Still a mystery. A lot of speculation out there. A lot of mystery out there. What in the world is going on in Sumner County? We've been discussing this case, sharing a lot of key details, and trying to keep up to speed with what is new. I saw a lot of people in the chat, 500 in the chat. Welcome aboard. We've been covering the case extensively on JLR Investigates. We're talking about this young man here. For anyone that does not know, Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers is still missing. Sebastian Rogers, um, if you're not familiar with his name, Google his name. There's a lot of information about this case and it's public awareness that will most likely probably solve this case because I'm not so sure about TBI and Sumner County Sheriff's anymore. In my mind, I... I, I just shocked that they don't really give any updates and they don't really do anything um, that they're sharing with the public. No, they're not obligated to. And that's, you know, they don't owe us anything. So it's just, it's, we're at like, we're almost at a standstill here because, you know, I said to myself, I said to myself on this case with me is we're not going to go down false rabbit holes just to, just to go down false rabbit holes. And we're not just going to put out stuff out there that's just like misinformation or bogus stuff just to keep the case going. We want to try to get as factual information as possible. We want to try to understand key players with this and kind of crack at the onion. Uh, to get the truth, right? We don't want to go down these like conspiracies on JLR Investigates. Probably why a lot of you people watch JLR Investigates because we try to stick with what's probably the most logical scenarios in, 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 in the situation. But you know, for me, it's like at this point, anything and everything is on the table. That's what I think, right? Anything and everything is on the table with, with this case. Two things. I talked to a uh, former co-worker of Katie with Brinks and I also spoke had a conversation um with Terry Bowersox. Terry Bowersox, the junior, 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 the estranged son to the Bowersox. The estranged son to the Bowersox. I sent him a Facebook message. He asked for my number and guess what? He called. And I appreciate his call. However, he doesn't want to be up on YouTube as far as any conversations or anything um, putting his face out there on um, YouTube. Uh, he is a semi sort of private uh, person, but he did set the record straight because he wants to nip this in the butt because he said that people have been prying on him in the last week or so and stuff. And it's wild with, with Bower Sox, Terry Brower Sox, who is the estranged son of uh, Terry and um, Catherine, right? He actually left that family 10 years ago and left the state of Tennessee. He's in Kentucky and he wants nothing to do with that family. And I, I tried to, you know, why, 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 why? He says personal reasons. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you. But he does feel that Chris Proudfoot is involved. And he actually himself made a public post about Chris Proudfoot. Uh, he also told me Chris Proudfoot is a weird dude. He said the dude is a weird dude, and he said Kathy is nutty. Now, Kathy's not his mom. His dad is Terry. As we know, Chris Proudfoot, uh, you know, his, his, you know, his Terry Bowersox is his stepdad. So his biological mom is, is Catherine. She marries this um, Terry Bowersox. And then, uh, you know, something happened, you know, with this family where, where, you know, he's using the same name. He has the same name. So it's your family lineage, uh, your same name. You're supposed to pass the baton and you go off, off, off your father's legacy, right? But this guy wants nothing to do with his father. And that paints a picture here because we want to know why. We want to know. It could, it could be Terry Bowersox Jr. himself, though, in fairness. You know, it could be something on his end that we don't know about. Or whatever, but he definitely feels that Chris Proudfoot is guilty. He put that out there, and I'm going to show you a post that he made or a comment he made in reference to this case. And he also told me, folks, that 
He didn't hear about this case until just a few days ago, which is like wild. Just a few days ago. Just a few days ago. Well, this is him. This is him right here. And in this in this message here, he says, or in this in this comment, he says, this is Terry Bowersox Jr. Most likely the stepdad had something to do with it. He is a piece of trash, a very capable of hurting young children. That's what Terry Bowersox Jr. Now, he called me. He called me this morning. Another thing, too, is we're starting to get to paint a picture here with the relationship between Katie and Christopher. A co-worker has told me that Katie has complained about her marriage. Her marriage was on, on the rocks, meaning it wasn't right. Something she was not happy and there was a lot of friction with that relationship. And it's almost like validation because... When someone on Chris's end reached out to me, a, a bartender, you know, down there at Texas Roadhouse in, in uh, Alabama, where it was Chris used to work at a job site, kind of said the same thing on Chris's end. And, you know, is that part of, you know, the puzzle here or some sort of backstory and history between Katie and Christopher? You know, uh, we're, we're talking about a guy, right? A guy, Christopher. That, you know, it's, he looks like he's the breadwinner in that house. He looks like he's the one that makes the money and Katie's kind of like secondary as far as money-wise. Um, Katie, you know, she works Brinks. I don't know how much Brinks people make. Well, I would say 50, 60 a year. But I would think that Mr. Proudfoot would make more. Plus, Proudfoot has the backing of the Bower Socks. Um, they are, they have money, folks. They have money. Katie's side of the family does not. Katie's side of the family has lots of uh, history with, with drugs, and if you're struggling out there with drugs, please, you can get the help and, you know, um, get the support. You know, drugs is deadly, addiction is real, um, but people on Katie's end, people's on Katie's end, her immediate family from Virginia have a lot, I mean a lot, folks, of legal problems, a lot of problems where... Uh, they've been in trouble with the law, and it doesn't seem like they're a proper safety net for Katie, uh, you know, a support system, because they have their own issues and problems. Plus, they haven't posted anything out there to publicly support the situation. I'd be surprised if they even knew, considering that Terry Bowersox didn't, you know, he's, he didn't even know what was going on with this case. But here, here's more of people that are that are talking about Proudfoot, Chris, and Katie, and about that relationship. And it does make sense, though Chris works, right, long jobs. But at these long jobs, he goes away for these extended periods of time. And I think it's more, you know, not just the job itself. He's doing that, the way I'm told he's doing that, it's because he's getting away from Katie. And whatever, possibly Sebastian, because we still don't know if Chris loves Sebastian. We don't know that. I haven't seen a photograph. Or anything that exists with Christopher in a group family pic, right? TBI released photos of Sebastian being missing. They add one photo with Katie and Sebastian at a restaurant that wasn't taken at that night. Uh, they went to the Texas Roadhouse, by the way. But nothing else. There's other pictures of Katie out there, though, with Sebastian. But you don't see pictures of Chris Proudfoot with Sebastian. And that, to me, is a red flag. It's a red flag. So Bower Sox did call me, and I appreciate that. So, you know, I believe he's innocent. So because there's people out there that, you know, are throwing his name around. That's kind of why I reached out to him. But he did he did call me back, and I put the tweet out. He did call me back. He called me back this morning. We had a 12-minute conversation. I uh, blocked out his number. Blocked out his number. We had a 12-minute and 40-second conversation this morning, um, and we talked. And he wanted to set the record straight because he's starting to see people, you know, put his stuff out there. There are groups out there, um, Facebook groups centered around this uh, tragedy. We operate the best and the most liveliest of these Facebook groups. There's a few. There's a few. I think there's five or six of them out there. Find Sebastian Rogers. Sebastian Rogers missing in Hendersonville. We have a big one, and I'm going to show you this. And we always promote this because we are a growing. Sebastian Army, and we have at this point 16,600 members. 
We will probably be at 20,000 members within the next week. We are growing expedition. Uh, we are growing big. We're, we're growing quickly. And our group has latest updates, including people that know these people personally. So we get the scoops. We get the insights. How we find out they're at Crackle Barrel. We get pictures. Uh, you know, people around their house and stuff like that. Seeing what they're up to. We get it all. So I strongly recommend everyone to... Um, you know, join that chat and share, share your theory and speculation. It's one of the few ways you could keep Sebastian's name out there without the case uh, going cold over social media. I think it's up to us on social media to uh, keep this case circulating, keep this case going, keep it in the spotlight, make sure it does not get cold. Authorities are giving a press conference tomorrow. An update on this case. There's an announcement that there's going to be an update. However, folks, this update, um, I don't believe is going to, it, I think this is going to be a nothing burger update. Um, I think there has been a lot of pressure on law enforcement to come out with something. Say something. Give something. Give a clue. Ask, you know, give some, you know, I'm thinking, give a surveillance out to the public so they can be aware of what Sebastian was really wearing out there when he went missing instead of what the mother says uh he was wearing and that you know anything and everything that the mother says at this point um i would i wouldn't you know you could believe some things but i would not believe any chain of events at this point with katie saying anything and moving forward you know she's had a lot of time to you know line everything up line the story and you know keep that story going so um, you know i wouldn't take anything she says uh for granted and also well for granted yeah but <laughs> wouldn't take anything that she says seriously though you know you should listen to every words that's what i mean by taking by granted you we should listen because we want to see but investigators give update in the search for missing autistic teen sebastian rogers Summer County Sheriff's Office will hold an update on Sebastian Rogers Tuesday morning, folks. Though the agency does not have any new developments to report. I don't get that. How would you know that a press conference coming out um, with no new developments? Do they tell them, tell everyone beforehand, well, we're having a press conference, but what, no new developments? Well, what's the point of the press conference? Uh, Sumner County Sheriff's Office Deputy Craddock, who seems to be, he's the one that's kind of like the figurehead in this. He is um, going to hold a 11 a.m. press conference announcement. At this time, we do not have new developments to report. However, we understand the importance of keeping the public informed, and we want to assure you that the investigation into Mr. Rogers' disappearance remains ongoing. February 26th, that's when it's reported he was missing. I'm a little skeptical about that 6 a.m. timeline. So are you. Some of you believe it. I don't. Um, I think for me being, you know, in the area, knowing the case a little bit, I would say Texas Roadhouse on Texas Roadhouse on. However, you know, I put a tweet out. I'm kind of like, you know, I call the TBI. I appreciate the TBI and they actually, uh, TBI Leslie, one of the PIOs used to respond to me all the time with Summer Wells, but they lately, even on Summer Wells, they don't even respond to me anymore. Maybe because I'm a pain in the butt to them by asking them this, that, and the other. Uh, I try to send records requests. Unfortunately, I can't get records requests because I'm not a Tennessee citizen. There is one of the few law uh, states in the country where you have to be a resident of that state to obtain records via public uh, public records request. But you guys can. You guys, if you're from Tennessee, you know, submit questions to them in form, forms of records requests and see what they say. They might give something. They might not. Um, but I, I, you know, I put out the tweet on them and I said to them. I said to them, and I tagged them, and I was like, uh, why won't the TBI and Sumner County Sheriff's Office release to the public the video footage of Sebastian and Katie Proudfoot leaving Texas Roadhouse on the evening of February 25th? Seth Rogers claims he and Katie seen it, and both of them are not clear, which I find interesting, right? Because TBI, according to Seth, uh you know brought them in katie and 
Seth, don't believe Chris is there, though. I heard Chris was on some sort of video conference to come and look at surveillance, right? Come and look at surveillance. Seth said the surveillance that he saw where he actually saw Sebastian was at the Texas Roadhouse. Now, he said he saw, he, according to, uh, uh, he was speaking again on another podcaster, uh, T-Rev's uh, podcast, and said uh, that he also viewed footage of the trash being taken out but couldn't identify the subject in that video, too dark and too grainy. So really, what we're hearing, and the way I'm hearing it is, the last sighting of Sebastian that you could say, hey, that's Sebastian Rogers, was the Texas Roadhouse. So the question is, if that's the last public, you know, place to, you know, where you can really say, hey, that's Sebastian, and they're showing Katie and Seth, who could very well be suspects, because we both said they're not, or Seth said, I'm not, I'm not even cleared as a suspect. Why would they show them that and not the public that? Don't you think the public should? And I'm asking you, maybe you guys say, no, the public doesn't have a right to see them. Do you think the public should be able to uh, see this footage so we can see what was Sebastian wearing? Because then we can maybe have an I, I understanding what was Sebastian wearing on the 25th. Because at this time, I haven't seen anything to indicate that he returned home. The only thing I've seen and heard was Katie's story. And I uh, subsequently put up tweets and, or, you know, follow up tweets and I said, this case is just weird, confusing. A kid just does not vanish out of thin air. One would think releasing a person's last known whereabouts could help. Do authorities think releasing would hinder the investigation? What if there's not any actual footage at all of Texas Roadhouse? And that's another thing too. What about there's really no notifications? You see, we're, we're, we're taking people's word for things. And I'm not saying anyone's a liar. But we're just taking people's words for all of this. That's why I don't, I don't buy Katie's version. I don't buy Katie's version based off inconsistencies and the way she behaves in this case. But who's, um, who, am I, who am I to say, hey, I, this person should behave this way, this way, this way. That's her. She behaves her own way. Might be just because she behaves that way, but I don't think so. To me, the way she behaved during this case and not go out there and even, you know, even me... Speaking and encountering with the Bower Sox, who I feel like they're holding some family secrets here. I don't believe anything they say. Do you? Now, another thing, folks, which is very interesting is this Alaska trip. And I'm stumped on this. I'm stumped on this. Oh, we also identified Big uh, D, by the way. Big D. Remember Big D? Remember Big D? Remember Nina? This is Big D, folks. Now, Big D was mentioned in Nina's interview with Trev Time, where the ex-wife of Chris spoke about the family dynamics, about what transpired between, you know, Chris, her, the children, including their child together, Faith, Bowers socks got thrown into the mix, about their treatment of children, and also Big D. Big D. Oh, people said they can't see Big D. There's Big D. I covered the other faces. There is Big D. Take a screenshot. It is Big D. We found Big D. Now, he seems like he's part of, his name is Bryant D. Guy. Because Bower Sox, owner of public Facebook profile, identifies as Catherine Guy. Bower socks. Big D with two of his favorite girls eating spaghetti at the spaghetti factory and watching get both racing on the Cumberland. So here's Big D, folks. What kind of role does Big D have in this case? And is he the henchman? And I don't say this sarcastically. I thought it was funny when she said her, Big D. But is he like the one that does the dirty things for it? The Bower Sox. Because the Bower Sox, to me, is fishy. And I say that not maliciously, not in bad faith. I say it based off my own experience with the Bower Sox. 
They're literally in Chris Proudfoot's neighborhood chasing cars around. It wasn't my, just me. It was two others that told me this and shared their own experiences. When they were out there searching for Sebastian, they had flyers, the power socks lurking around in their vehicle, SUV, taking pictures of people and kind of intimidating them in a sense. The Bower Sox. Now, uh, Terry Bower Sox was not kind, said kind things to about Kathy. But to me, it's like the encounter is basically you're seeing someone, right? Now, rather they, they, I don't know if they're aware of me. I don't know if they're aware. It was weird because I don't even think they knew who I was. Got a media shirt. Hey, JLR investigates. Covering the Sebastian case. You know anything? What's up? And then instead of saying, oh, that's my grandson. We're looking. Whatever like that. You jump in your car and you run away after you chase me. But you jump in your car and run away. Like, who does that? But another thing that's uh, it's interesting is, you know, when Kathy was posting things about searching and doing all this mobilizing because she made all these public post on Facebook about mobilization and help and we're gonna you know we're out there looking and whatnot look she said command center remember she said she set up a command center command center update and then she said in this post here Kathy she was like they're now asking people to drive the roads drive the neighborhoods drive around buildings and businesses they have deployed drones and heat sensors for the groundwork report anything you see thank you that are all willing to help. So she posts this on a day after the, the, the search or the day after Sebastian was reported missing on February 27th. Well, guess what, folks? Sumner County Sheriff's responded to her. Did you guys know that? And they were like, this is what they said. Miss Bowersox, please edit your post. We appreciate your willingness to assist in the search for Sebastian. We have hundreds of trained professionals conducting the search, equipped with specialized technology. This includes the use of drones and air support, which can help us reduce the chance of false sightings. Our teams are experienced in such operations, ensuring a thorough and efficient search. Thank you for your understanding and continued support. They wanted her to edit the, edit the post about her talking about doing this, that, and the other. Like, yo, we have this under control, lady. It's just weird. And, and, and here's why I think it's weird. Because she's so gun ho a day later about searching for Sebastian. And then a few days after that, she and Terry Bowersox, her husband, go to Alaska. They go to Alaska, folks. In the midst of a 15-year-old grandson being missing... Now, I asked Terry Jr. about that, and he said I, I, he doesn't know. He, he doesn't know why they would do that. He said maybe it could be a prearranged. He told me maybe it was a prearranged trip. And very well could be. But again, again, folks, if your significant other or your loved one was missing and there was frantically searching, would you just go to work and just go to work and leave? For instance, if you were in whatever state you're in and your loved one went missing, someone very, very close to you, and there's searches all over the place and everyone needs help, would you just tell everyone, well, I'm going to leave the state because I got to go to work? Terry had to go to work, but Kathy didn't have to go to work. Terry supposedly works for Motor Coach and had some trip in Alaska to go to. Prearranged, but Kathy went and joined him. Sounds a little bit weird to me. I would stick around and try to find my loved one. I would do it. I wouldn't just say, hey, I'm going to travel 61 hour, hours away, drive. Or is vacationing and trips to Alaska more important than your loved one? And I say that because I was told that they actually drove to Alaska. And my mind was thinking, how in the world can you drive to Alaska? Because once you get up to Seattle, we're up in that area of Vancouver, you got a ferry, right? You got a ferry. But you can actually drive to Alaska. You got to go up through Canada. And go up through Canada. 
But these things are, these, these ones are, this is what stumps me about that. Now, I'm not saying the grandparents are involved whatsoever. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, has authorities thoroughly checked their whereabouts before Sebastian was reported missing and afterward? Have they, thir- have they checked their alibis? Have they checked and see exactly what their whereabouts are? Have they seen? Because if you don't know where Sebastian is now, then you're going to have to expand the, the people you want to investigate. Because if you're just going to stick to two people, how's that even doing an investigation? An investigation gets about down to the bottom of things is expand the investigation out. Go to the inner circle and then expand out a little bit more. But the Proudfoots are definitely, definitely, you know, the Bower Sox are definitely aligned with Chris and Katie with some stuff. Like associating stuff. They all went out to Crackle Barrel on Easter together. Bower socks are, uh, 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 yeah, Bower socks are at Christopher's house when Christopher and Katie are down there at a campground in Mississippi. They're going around the house. I've always said, I believe they were there to do a favor or do a deed or do a task. But why aren't they being looked at? Or are they? Or have they already been? Have they been cleared in the minds of TBI? Sumner County Sheriff's. This is the public Facebook profile of Terry Bowersox. This is the man that was taking pictures of my license plate. And this is the one where people have told me who is driving around looking and suspiciously of people searching for Sebastian. There's something interesting. He identifies as a tech trainer writer at Motor Coach Industries. Motor Coach Industries. And it's been said, confirmation by Kathy herself that they were in Alaska because she, they, he was working for him. Motor Coach Industries. You know what Motor Coach Industries is, folks? You know what Motor Coach Industries is right here? Motor Coach Industries. These big, big, giant buses. These big, big, giant buses, motor coach, right? Charter, what is this? Uh, that to me is a little suspicious as far as you got a grandchild that vanishes out of thin air. And you work for a company that has these big, giant shipping vehicles, buses. Now my question is, did they really, they went to Alaska, that's the truth, that's the, we can't, we can't dispute that, they went to Alaska, they put on their own Facebook profile, Kathy has responded, somebody said, they're in Alaska, they're in Alaska, my sources told me they went to Alaska, they went to Alaska, you look on their Facebook profile, by the way, Bower Sox, Terry, by the way, by the way, grandson's missing, right, grandson's missing, grandson's missing, Nothing on his Facebook profile about Sebastian. Nothing. Nothing. Where's the public awareness for his grandson? It ain't on his Facebook. And he's on Facebook, folks, because he's commenting, you know, he's sniping at people in these Facebook groups. Oh, he's active. Oh, he's active. But he's active enough to be hanging out in these Facebook groups, responding to negative comments. But he can't even put anything up about his grandson on Facebook. Not even a flyer. Nothing. Everything is private. So to me, that's like weird. Then we got the motor coach. Now, I just want to show you a map between Gallatin and Alaska. Juneau, Alaska. Alaska's big, but they went to Juneau area. You can literally drive there to Alaska. Then I think you have to ferry to Juneau. But I'm told, folks, I'm told they drove. They drove to Alaska. Now look at this distance. So right after Sebastian went missing, uh, vanishes out of thin air, Kathy Bowersox, you know, she made some posts urging people to look for Sebastian. 
Sumner County kind of responded to her and told her, we got this, chill out, which is interesting. And then they leave, both of them, and go to Alaska, go to Juneau. But you can see it is, here's the distance, 3,496 miles, 62-hour drive. And you got to go up through Canada. You got to go up through Canada. So you're talking uh, 12, 20, you know, three days, four days to get there because you probably have to make some stops. Now my question is, if they drove to Alaska or if they flew, what's the route they took? What's the route? Who was with them? What's the route that they took? Because when I heard this, and I know you guys are, I know what you guys are thinking. I think we all think the same on JLR Investigates. If they went to Alaska, what's in your mind? Whoa, Sebastian could be in Alaska, right? Is that what you're thinking? He's hidden somewhere in Alaska. Well, we've been looking thoroughly to see if the Bauer Sox or the Proudfoots have any associates, friends, or anything in Alaska. I haven't found nothing yet. Have you guys done that? Look around? So I said, maybe they drove on a motor, motor coach. That's the kind of employment you got here. Cross-country trip to Alaska in the middle of a, a grandson being missing. And then, then they do come back. They came back like last week. I don't know how long they were there. Maybe they came back last week. You know, they popped up when I was there. Some people were saying, oh, you know, for two months, two weeks prior, oh, they're in Alaska. They're in Alaska. Then they come back. Secrets, folks. Family secrets. And it does it just doesn't smell right to me. I want to know more about that. Uh Mr. Bowersox, uh Terry Jr. could not elaborate about the trip to Alaska. Again, he hasn't spoken to his family in ten years. Literally. He said, I want nothing to do it. So if you're out there, people, and you I wouldn't recommend anyone contacting Terry Bowersox Jr. The estranged son. He's he's out of it. He's not involved. He told me he hopes Sebastian gets found. He has his own family in Kentucky. Doesn't know what's going on. But I want to know a little bit more about these two. I really do. The Bower Sox. What's up with this, man? Has authorities questioned them? Should the... Should the... Should the authorities question them? Should they come out or are they just not going to come out? They're supporting Chris. And I, again, we're not trying to be mean here on JLR Investigates. We're not pointing fingers. We said nothing about them being involved. But it piques my interest and you still don't, you know, have this kid found. Should searches continue, you know, if, if they went to Alaska, are we talking about should we all expand a search all the way up to Alaska? 3,500 miles away from Gallatin? This is another theory, too. I'll tell you this. this the, I like this theory, though. I like this theory here as a possible scenario. I don't like, I don't like if this happened. Let me just rephrase that. Um... But this theory here is interesting because this is in our group and join our group because we got a lot of people that comment. But this is a theory here that kind of makes sense too. And I would like to know a little bit more about this because remember the Proudfoot said they got a bed or they replaced their bed? Only a theory. Yes, only a theory. Bed was in garage to be used as punishment at night when caught sneaking food. Autistic children have this habit, a hollow leg attached to their stomach. That's where he was locked in the garage where Katie chatted on the phone to control free Chris while sipping her wine. She fell asleep, awoke panicked knowing the garage is freezing, left him in there, fell asleep, perhaps hypothermia. Now, again, we're, this is theories. This is theories, folks. But there was 
Why'd they get a new bed? Why'd they get a new bed? Logical? I don't think so, but it's something we should throw out there. Why'd they get a new bed during the course of this case when he's missing? A lot of people are saying no. Some people say it makes sense. That's why I like your comments. Keep your comments coming. Keep your comments coming. You know, we're going to leave no stuff. We're not going to go any no craziness. But that doesn't, I mean, you know, because people were talking about mm -hmm. the speculation that, you know, Sebastian got locked out of his house as punishment or whatever. Katie locked him out and stuff like that. And he was just was locked out there without any shoes. You know, we hear these type of speculations as far as punishment. What type of discipline happened in that household with Sebastian and his parents? What, how would he get disciplined? Well, we heard Chris say he didn't win a belt. You know something about Christopher? He's laid hands on every child he's had. Uh, Anita, thank you for your support. Said we need boots on the ground in Alaska. Well, I mean, authorities, you would think would say to the bowers like we're exactly where you were at all times plus i mean they got their phones on them right is is sebastian out there stashed somewhere like stashed in a house because i'm not i'm not so sure authorities think this is a homicide i think they were stomped and they they went to the trash the garbage the the landfill but I really don't think at this point anything came out of it. Out of that landfill. Is this a case where Sebastian, I mean, is this a case where for some reason, again, I, I don't know. I always think about Chris Proudfoot's case in, in New Mexico. I think about, you know, the CPS stuff. Like CPS ready to get involved and stuff like that. You got to get it like, like the CPS stuff. You know, we've heard the CPS stories. I don't know the truth of that. CPS is always tight-lipped, and we're not going to probably get information. We're only going to get versions of what people want about that, and Chris will say his version, whatever. They will say their version, but, you know, one thing, when the CPS, it reminds me of Summer Wells' case, where my whole theory was that CPS was actually at the Wells' house the day before Summer Wells went missing, and they were planning on going back. And what do you do? You hide the evidence. What's the evidence? The body. You know, it was CPS ready to come up on uh, Sebastian for some reason? I don't know. I don't know. Family secrets, and there's a lot of them. But we're, we're, we're cracking it. We're figuring it out. We might not even be right. But at least we're bringing public awareness to the situation. And, you know, I... Again, I, I think everything that we said here tonight on this particular segment was reasonable to ask these questions. I don't think anything was so far fetched. We do have lack of information. Lack of information leads to speculation. If we get more information, we can maybe put these uh, pieces together and, and make more things make sense. I'd love for the Bower Sox to come out, but I don't think they will. They're probably private people or, you know, or smart people. We don't even know. You know, I heard that the Proudfoot's got lawyers, but, you know, I don't know. Are the are the Proudfoot's fully cooperating with law enforcement right now? And so far, the law enforcement has said everything that we've asked of them, they've been cooperative. But are they doing the bare bones minimum with that? Like, you do what law enforcement tells, but you're not going to give law enforcement extra info. Only what law enforcement asking requires you and what has law enforcement what can law enforcement legally ask people to do because they also have a lot of rules policies laws and regulations that they got to do themselves in handling cases they got to tread lightly too you know because there's policies in place now when it comes to law enforcement but one thing is like you know with this you know again i'm not bashing Sumner County, I'm not bashing TBI. But are we starting to turn into a Summer Wells case? And not only the Summer Wells case of Summer Wells being missing for a thousand days plus, 
but the circus around the Summer Wells case. And if you guys know about the Summer Wells case, it is a complete S show circus for the last three years. And it draws and, and the Proudfoots, and, but you know, if they Proudfoots want to be tight lipped or whoever wants to be tight lipped, they got to understand. And they should study the Summer Wells case because the circus is not going to go away. The circus is not going to go away. I think the circus is here to stay until just like with the Wells. And if Proudfoots think, well, this is going to blow over, no, they're, 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 they're dude, they're memes. They have memes. In Facebook groups, let me see if I can get one. They have memes of the uh, of of the Proudfoots, like they set they put memes out there. Um, they're already put them in the handcuffs. And let me see if I can get one example. Let me see. Let me see. Let me. I mean, they're doing all types of things. Look, they're already memeing. Psst. See what that says? They already they're already memeing. It's not gonna go away. You want to go up to the Crackle Barrel after this dumb interview? Oh, there's a lot more. There's the Proudfoots in handcuffs and the Proudfoots in, in, in jail suits. And Look. Look. They're memeing them. They're already memeing them. The Bower Sox. Justice coming to take a look at my son's future living quarters. <laughs> That's pretty wild, you know? It's not me posting the memes. These are people. We got 16,000 in our group. But that is not going to stop. This type of stuff is not going to stop. Let me see if I can find more. Here you go. This type of stuff is not going to stop. It's not going to stop. People could just keep going and going and going and going and going. Not going to go away. There's too many people involved. There's a community out there in Hendersonville that care. Tennessee residents care. The whole world's watching. The whole world's watching. I can't find any more. I'm, I'm going in the... <laughs> I mean, come on, man. See what I mean? I keep meaning. It's not going to stop. Now, probably what's... Well, maybe they're just staying off social media. I think the best thing is to do is stay off social media this way. I mean, because seeing triggering comments would probably trigger all right folks jlr investigates thanks for watching have a good evening everyone we talked for a while gave you the update and uh i'll continue to give you updates covering other cases um so uh i just want to share oh 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 check this out i received a medal today i received a medal and i want to share this medal oh i received in a medal i got a medal today I got a medal today, but it was sent to me by a sub of JLR Investigates, and they gave me a medal, folks, and I'm going to read this. They sent me a letter and with a thank you, and in this medal, it says, Jonathan, thank you for your boots on the ground and for all you do. You deserve a medal of honor for putting yourself in harm's way. I hope this at least lets you know that your hard work and efforts are very much appreciated. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, Tina. I love the medal and I really appreciate it. I got this in the mail. I'm like, yo, I got a medal. I'm going to put it on. Like, doo -doo 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 -doo. We got a medal, folks. But these type of things from you guys, it's motivation. And I appreciate that. I'm very uh, humbled. We got a medal. Bravery. We're going to find answers. We're not going to stop. But the next, uh, uh, there's a couple things, you know, I, you know, I'm contemplating whether to, con you know, I want to monitor the searches. If they do a big search, maybe I will participate in cover. Maybe I won't. Uh, there's other things I'm, I'm, I might be interested in, you know, moving forward. Uh, Caleb Harris. Reward money with that case went up. They're really trying to find people. Uh, hopefully that reward money that's out there would help people come out and, and, and share something. We've always said on JLR Investigates, we're not in it for the reward. We're in it. If, if, there, if we ever did find an answer to a case, we would donate every single penny of a reward back to causes, animals, uh, uh, victims of domestic violence, 
I've always said, uh, you know, if there was always, uh, if, 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 if we ever found somebody and there was a reward, I would basically give reward money to the four victims in the Idaho case, Michael Vaughn's family and uh, other people's families out there. Give them the reward money. We're not doing it for reward. We do it for passion. But Caleb Harris, and then also there's a uh, an eclipse, an eclipse that's coming up. An eclipse that's slicing through the United States. Slicing through April 8th. So I might go check out the eclipse. And then I put out a tweet. Now let me ask you guys' opinion on this. We don't know much about this case at all. I don't know much about this case. But I put this tweet out. Basically said, here's another case that's coming up in a couple weeks. I'm thinking about going to Massachusetts to cover the circus at the Karen upcoming Karen Reed trial. And Karen Reed has a trial, and I, you know, see all this type of, you know, besides Karen Reed and all that, you know, guilty, not guilty, because there's passionate people on both sides of that case. But it's thinking about maybe just going and just covering it as far as I don't know anything about it. I never read any of the details details but maybe just live stream what's going on outside see who comes around and who is doing what seeing what's transpired maybe we'll do it maybe we won't so those are some of the upcoming things that we could do of course we're on standby if something happens camera ready bag i got my bag packed where is my bag bat cave we're on standby. All right, everyone. Uh, stay safe. We'll chat tomorrow. Or if something breaks, check out the videos. JL on Investigates. Have a great day, everyone. Be safe. Hopefully, Sebastian is found soon. Hopefully, we'll get some answers and uh, justice. And also, whoever did this held accountable to the full extent of the law. Cheers, everyone. Have a good day. Peace. JLR Investigates.